This week on TGC News, the Silencer Co. Maxim 47, Auto Glove gets the ATF treatment and 22 Nosler finds a new home. Daniel Defense makes some of the highest quality semi-automatic rifles on the planet, whether it's the DDM4, the ISR, the V7, maybe the DD5308, you can't go wrong. And now they're giving you more with every rifle. But I'll wait to tell you about that at the end of the video. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. There's a ton of stuff to talk about this week, so let's get right to it. First up, Silencer Co. wound up and kicked the ATF as hard as they could in the no, no, don't touch me there bits. Then I'm gonna kick him right in the groin. <laughs> With the introduction of the Maxim 50. What is it? A 50 caliber Traditions Vortex Striker Fire muzzle loader with a Silencer Co. suppressor welded to the muzzle with an MSRP of $9.99. The loading procedure is very similar to other muzzle loaders, except that you need to go down through the suppressor and therefore they included a loading tube to aid in that. No one wants to mess with black powder inside the can. That's a bad day. And I know someone is going to ask, so the cleaning procedure is again very similar to other modern inline muzzle loaders. Swab the bore with some patches, clean it out like that, and then rinse the suppressor out with some water. It really is extremely simple to maintain. I know some people just think of muskets and like the blunderbuss when they think of black powder, but modern inline guns and accessories are really advanced. So what's the big deal about the Maxim 50? Well, prepare yourself for some legal nonsense while I explain. Under federal law, a muzzle loader is not classified as a firearm. On top of that, a silencer is something that attaches to a firearm and is intended to reduce the sound signature. Well, because a muzzle loader is not a firearm, the thing on the muzzle is not a silencer. If the silencer portion were to be detachable and able to be used on a centerfire rifle, it would be classified as a silencer, but as it is part of the muzzle loader, it is permanently attached, it is just being called a sound moderator. Yes, this is the nonsense that is US gun laws. And the funny thing is that air gun companies have been doing this sort of thing for years. In theory, this was going to be the first ever 50 state legal suppressed gun. I say in theory, because not 48 hours after the release, three states, California, Massachusetts, and Jersey, told Silencer Co. to jog on and proclaim that it was not legal in their state. Oddly enough, this was mostly due to already existing regulations that classified muzzle loaders as firearms on a state level. The implications of such a product are massive. When I heard about this, I was pumped. Imagine all of the guys out there, the FUD types, the guys that are like, oh, screw suppressors, I don't need that, that aren't into ARs for hunting or anything like that. And they grab a suppressed muzzle loader then suddenly they're suppressor advocates. Think about that. It's a massive demographic that could suddenly go, wait, why are these things being so heavily regulated? And then you have the huge crowd of people that simply aren't allowed to have them or hunt with them based on the classification of that item where they live. That could be challenged nationwide with the Maxim 50. This is a big deal, at least for 47 states. It's kind of disappointing to see that there wasn't more of an effort to confirm legality in all 50 states, but perhaps the intent was to make a big enough splash that it didn't really matter. I mean, the promo showed someone walking into the state of California, right across the border, and their promo images were primarily done in Cali. But it's not legal there. I'm sure the massive amount of refunds they had to give to California buyers was not pleasant, and maybe that's the lesson learned. I can't speak for Silencer Co. in that regard. What I can say, though, is that I hope we don't see any more states follow suit and classify the Maxim 50 as a firearm or a silencer. And another thing that I can say is that I have one of these things on hand, and I can't wait to get out to the range and try it. It makes me want to go hunt muzzleloader season just because it's such a cool product. I want to know what you guys think of the Maxim 50. Is this something that's completely awesome, or is it something that wasn't needed at all? Sound off in the comments below. And in ATF hate parade news, everyone's favorite new accessory, the auto glove, which I covered a few weeks back, is now classified as a machine gun by the ATF. 
I was really hoping to get my hands on one of these things too. I actually reached out to them to get a test sample. Essentially, it was a motor and switch that attaches to a glove on your hand and would allow the user to simulate full auto fire. In a letter they received from the Firearms Technology Industry Services branch of the ATF, it states that the plunger on the auto glove itself is legally the trigger, and it also states that the ATF has long held that electronic actuator devices are not okay. They also stated that Autogloves' primary reason for their product not being machine gun, the fact that it was not permanently attached, is not found anywhere in the definition of a machine gun and therefore does not apply. Essentially what the ATF letter says is do not pass go, do not collect $200, go directly to jail if you possess an Autoglove. And you must be the Monopoly guy. Hey, thanks for the free parking. And that brings us to a big issue that I'm kind of seeing pop up in the firearms industry. The release of a product that is potentially breaking the law without ATF approval first. It's as if the first question you need to ask these days becomes, do you have an ATF approval letter? And that's not okay. You shouldn't have to do that with every product that comes out. There's a company I'll be talking about in next week's show that has a product like that. A brace type product that I immediately had to ask, do you have an approval letter? Of course, they don't yet, but there it is for sale. It's frustrating because no one wants to deal with the ATF and the wishy-washy crap they've pulled in the past, but it is a necessary evil. And in regards to people that bought an autoglove, there's a message on Autoglove's website, first stating that everyone has had their money refunded, and that's followed by a bunch of excuses as to the confusing nature of the NFA and other gun laws that the ATF cited. I guess we won't be able to do a 300 Win Mag Autoglove mag dump. <laughs> And last but not least, CMMG has just announced the expansion of the Mark IV line of rifles with the addition of the 22 Nosler variant. If you are unfamiliar, the basics of the 22 Nosler are 25% higher case capacity than the 223, and therefore better ballistics out of a standard AR-15. The only thing you need to change is the barrel. They recommend using 6.8 SPC magazines due to the wider cases, but in theory it will work with regular AR mags. The bragging point of this cartridge was to bring the ballistics of the 22250 into an AR and utilize a standard AR-15 bolt. I personally love new and different uses for the AR-15, whether it's big bore or whether it's small and fast. It's all really cool to me. Expanding on the capability beyond what we're used to seeing is never a bad thing. We also actually gave Nosler the award for best ammo back at SHOT Show 2017 this past year. CMMG is offering these new Mark IVs in four different variants, with barrel lengths between 18 and 24 inches. There's also different stocks and triggers based on which model you get. Obviously, the higher you go in dollars, the better stuff you get. The price point on these ranges from about $1,100 to $1,450 MSRP. I actually have one of these rifles in my office right now waiting to be tested, so you guys will be seeing the 24-inch model very, very soon. You made it. Thanks for sticking around to check out this offer from DD. From now until October 15th, you will get a free Yeti Hopper Flip 8 cooler worth 200 bucks with the purchase of any Daniel Defense firearm. The cooler features a leak-proof zipper, Molly attachment points, and enough space inside to keep refreshments cool for any occasion. To get yours, check out the link in the video description. We have a few more friendly fire questions this week. First up, Joe Jones asks, what do you see being the next big thing for reloaders? That is a great question. I think more affordable automation will be the next big thing. Right now, good hobbyist level automation, stuff like AmmoBot or Mark 7 are not what I would call cheap at all. They're intense machines to set up and the price kind of reflects the massive R&D and complexity of it all. But if a company like Hornady or RCBS decided to gobble up a smaller company and get into the automation game, we may see an incredible step forward. Great question. Our next question is from Elijah Davenport, and he wants to know, what is the best holster rig for hurricane rescue slash cleanup efforts? What would that be? That's an easy one. The Kenai holster from Gunfighters Inc. I have one that I use for hunting and hiking purposes, and I love it. It's super comfortable wear and keeps the gun tight to your body. And last but not least, Ryan Perry asks, 
What is an affordable but quality over-under shotgun for someone looking to get into sporting clays? That's a simple one. Stoger makes decent quality entry-level over-unders for under a thousand bucks all day. You might also be able to find a good used Beretta or CZ or maybe a Franke for that same money. I've said it before, the biggest trick with finding the right shotgun for sporting clays is and always will be how it fits you. If that's not right, you'll never be able to shoot to your maximum. Now, my friendly fire question to you guys, how do you guys feel about guns and gun type products that are pink, purple, and all these other colors that are aimed specifically at women? Do you like them? Do you hate them? What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you have a question you want answered right here on TGC News, you can send it to me via the friendly fire page on theguncollective.com. And that is it for this week's show, guys. You know what to do if you enjoyed the episode. Hit that like button and share it with your friends. That is a massive help. And if you didn't, let me know why down in the comment section below. If you haven't yet, please get subscribed. You won't want to miss a single week. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Patriot Patch Company. Click the link in the description to learn more.